Hi all, welcome back to my channel Learn with Girish. This is the fourth video in the GitOps series. If you are new to GitOps, I recommend you to go through the previous videos. Uh, the links of those previous videos, I will provide it in the description box. This is a little bit advanced uh, session, uh, which covers how to do multi-tenancy using Flux. So with that, let's look into the agenda. Uh, we will cover how to do multi-tenancy in Flux. We'll also look at uh, the different types of multi-tenancy like the cluster isolation versus the namespace isolation. And then we will have a demo wherein we create a new environment within minutes. So with multi-tenancy, uh, you will be ideally having different environments based on whether you are creating a development environment or QA environment or a prod environment. And with Flux, we can only install a single agent per cluster. So ideally, like if you are using cluster isolation, wherein uh, you will have uh, a cluster per environment, then you might have to install the Flux agent on, off, on all those clusters. And if you are using namespace isolation, wherein you will have a single cluster and you have your environments uh, mapping to a namespace, uh, then you would use only a single flux agent in that cluster and, uh, and do the deployments to those environments. So in this session, we'll look at uh, the namespace isolation where each uh, environment is deployed to its respective namespace uh, in a single cluster. So here we have a flux bootstrap uh, command which we will run in the context of uh, a Kubernetes cluster which will connect to a git repo and uh, get all the required files from the git repo uh, including uh, the flux controller itself. Uh, these are uh, the controllers which we saw in the previous session like uh, the source controller, the helm controller and the customized controller. Uh, which constitutes uh, itself as uh, a flux agent. Uh, using this flux agent, uh, what we can do is we can have customization which will create cluster based resources uh, which are common to all the namespaces. So these resources can be like uh, a cert manager, the ingress controller, or you can define policies. Uh, like not to have uh, root access and uh, restricting access between namespaces and things like that uh, and also like you can install other things like uh, uh, components related to your service mesh or uh, your monitoring tools like Prometheus and uh, Grafana which will be common to all the namespaces uh, across the cluster. Uh, so once we define this cluster based resources, then we'll ask the flux, flux agent uh, to create uh, a development namespace and then deploy the apps over there and then configure uh, the Nginx uh, to point uh, to those apps and also create a certificate for that particular environment. Similar way, we do it for both uh, staging and production similar to Lion like that of development environment. So in multi-tenancy, the way uh, we organize our folder in Git becomes very important. So let's uh, take a look uh, of the folder structure in VS Code. So this is the folder structure uh, which I have over here. So if you see here, we have this cluster, my cluster. This is where uh, we have this flux system. And this is where all our flux components are installed. And then we have a folder called common. And this is where we have defined a customization, which is, uh, which is pointing to a path called as infra deploy. And if we see here in infra deploy, we have uh, the cluster based resource which which are common to all the namespaces like the cert manager and the ingress controller 
next comes the uh, development folder <coughs> here uh, in the development folder we have uh, defined a namespace and then there is a, a development deploy customization which is pointing to a path called as tenants slash development and if you see here the tenants slash development we have this customization file so in this customization file we have defined um, we are pointing to a base resources which is normal when we are using customization here we are first deploying or doing the app deployment and then uh, doing the post deployment uh, configuration like uh, creating a certificate uh, and, and also configuring the ingress control and here um, we are doing uh, the image uh, folder which will do the image up update automation which had uh, discussed in the previous session uh, so these are all pointing to a base folder and in the base folder we have all these folders here if you see in the app deploy we have the backend and the frontend app and in the post deploy we have certificates ingress configuration so uh, with development what we will be doing is we will be using all the base components and then override all those components uh, with a namespace name has development if you go and see over uh, here in the base configuration right here we are using a namespace as demo app uh, we are overriding uh, the namespace to have a development name so this is for uh, the development environment for staging here we are, again we are creating a staging namespace with a staging customization which points to a folder called tenants and staging and if we go to that particular folder tenants and staging over here uh, here we have customization over here again here we are using the base resources but in this case we have an additional component called as patches strategic merge which is again common to customization here we are overriding the certificate and the ingress with these particular files uh, so if you go to the certificate so here uh, we are having a different common name uh, here we are calling it as staging and in in our dev environment it's called as apps uh, so here we we are overriding uh, some of the configuration similarly uh, we are also overriding uh, the host name uh, in the ingress as well uh, so here we are specifying staging and in the customization uh, we are specifying the namespace as stage so we saw the folder structure of our git repo uh, next we will have a quick demo uh, so uh, already uh, two environments created dev staging and in the demo i would create a new environment for production If, if we go to this url app.gitopsword.com this is where our dev environment is hosted and uh, in staging.gitopsword.com this is where our uh, staging uh, app is hosted now we want to have uh, uh, the production environment at production.gitopsword.com so let's look at how do we uh, deploy our app uh, to this particular url uh, so I will go over uh, to the production folder. Uh, here I have uh, the production namespace which I have commented. I will uncomment this one and save it. And then we would have this customization file which would point to tenants slash production. Let me uncomment that and save the file. Okay. Now I will go to uh, the tenants production file over here. And if we see here, I have already defined uh, all the required things. Uh, so here uh, we have we are having the customization, which will again point to the base uh, folders, and then uh, the namespace will be pointing to production. Then we'll have the patches static merge, which will override the certificate and ingress. Let's let's uncomment this one, save it, go to the certificate patch. 
and uh, if you see here uh, this would point to a different common name and the dns name and similarly for ingress uh, would have the appropriate uh, host names which would be pointing to production.gitopsport.com okay uh, so i have done all the required changes uh, to create a new environment so with gitops uh, we will not be doing kubectl apply but we will be just uh, pushing the changes to a git repo which i will be doing now i'll say uh, i'll add all the required changes And then I will push these changes to my main branch. Okay, uh, the changes are pushed. So if if I navigate uh, to the cluster over here, and then go to the namespace. Now we don't find any production namespace. Now we will give some time for the flux agent uh, to synchronize all those files and uh, then uh, automatically create a production namespace and also deploy our app to a uh, to that particular URL. In the meantime, we can also run uh, the command called the flux get all. Uh, so this is where uh, it would show all the customization so if you see here the customization for production deploy uh, the reconciliation is in progress we'll give it uh, some time over here So after a few minutes, uh, when I ran flux get all, uh, we see for the production deploy, which uh, which is ready is equal to true. So this is done. Um, we can also uh, now uh, see the namespace. Uh, you can you can say uh, you can see that the production namespace has been created. Uh, we can also see uh, if our app are deployed to this namespace. The apps are deployed now uh, we can navigate uh, to this particular url and see that uh, our app is hosted uh, in this particular url so uh, let's look at the summary uh, so uh, we looked uh, uh, at how do we do multi-tenancy in flux uh, mainly on uh, the namespace isolation part. And then we had a quick demo wherein uh, we qu quickly deployed a new environment uh, within minute. Uh, thank you for joining this session. Uh, in, in my next video, I will try to cover how do we promote packages from one environment to another. Again, thank you and see you in the next session.